Welcome to Electro Online, and here we're going to establish how we calculate the table values where we compare a fraction of sigma to the actual area underneath the curve. Remember, this is specific to one of these, and let me find a little space right here. And this is, of course, specific to having a normal distribution where we want to find, for example, the area underneath the curve of a portion of that and going from zero to some value for, for b, where b will be some fraction of sigma. And so the equation that describes this normal distribution is this equation right here. We've seen it before. It's equal to 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus x squared divided by 2 sigma squared. Again, sigma is the standard deviation. So if we want to find the area underneath this curve, we have to integrate that function from 0 to b, and that will give us the area underneath the curve right here. So when we integrate this equation, the solution is equal to this, where we have what we call the error function of b times the square root of <coughs> the coefficient, which is 2 sigma squared. Uh, now, what we have to do then is understand what the error function is, and the definition of the error function is right here, right here. Um, also, when we simplify this, notice that the, the square root of 2 cancels out, the square root of pi cancels out, the sigma cancels out, which, so we just end up with 1 half times the error function. And since the error function is defined as this, we can see that we can factor out a 2 divided by the square root of pi. We can also factor out the square root of 2. The 2 cancels out, so you end up with 1 divided by the square root of 2 times pi times this quantity right here, knowing that b is the upper limit and sigma is a standard deviation, and so this is this infinite series. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the table values right here for two, <clears throat> for two places, for, sigma, for one sigma and for two sigma, because those are the easiest to work with. So in the case where <clears throat> b is equal to one sigma, the area, and of course the area we're going to calculate right here, is the area in our table that corresponds to the z value or the fraction of sigma as we say it. So the area is going to be equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi times, since b is going to be 1 sigma, it's going to be sigma divided by sigma, which is 1 minus, that will be 1 sigma divided by 1 sigma, and it's cubed, that's still 1, so that's 1 over 6. That would be plus 1 over 40, that would be minus 1 over 336, and plus 1 over 3456, and of course that would go off indefinitely, but I think that's sufficient number of values to come up with a value that's pretty close to this number right here. So let's try it. <clears throat> so it's 1 minus 1 divided by 6, plus 1 divided by 40, minus 1 divided by 336, and plus 1 divided by 3, 4, 5, 6 equals, we divide that by the square root of 2, and we divide it by the square root of pi, and the number I end up with here is 0 0.3414. Now compare this number to this number right here, and notice we got really, really close with only taking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms of that infinite series take one or two more turns, we've gotten that last decimal place correctly as well. So let's do it one more time, but in this case we're going to find, let b equal to 2 sigma. So if b is equal to 1 sigma, now we're going to go to b equals to 2 sigma. So we're, now we need to find this area right here, and according to the table it should be equal to 0.4772 or 47.72% of the total area underneath that graph. So when b is equal to 2 sigma, the area <coughs> is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi times, now notice b is going to be 2 sigma, so we end up with 2 minus, so that would be 2 sigma, that would be 2 cubed divided by 6, plus that would be 2 to the fifth power divided by 40, minus 2 to the seventh power divided by 336, and that would be plus 2 to the ninth power divided by 34, 56, and that would be minus plus and so forth. So let's see what value we end up in this case. <clears throat> Looks like my exponent kind of got a little far away from my 2, but that's okay. So we're going to multiply this area now for b equals to 2 sigma, so we're going to find this complete area right there using this calculation right here. So starting from here, we have 2 
minus, oh, <clears throat> 2 minus, that would be 8 divided by 6, 8 divided by 6, plus 2 to the fifth power is 32, so that would be 32 divided by 40, minus 2 to the seventh power is 128, that would be 128 divided by 336, plus 2 to the ninth power, 2 to the ninth power, which is 512, divided by 3456, equals. Now we take that number, divide by the square root of 2. So divide by square root of 2, and divide by the number pi, take the square root of that as well. And the number that I get is equal to 0 0.4922. And notice how that compares to what I have right here. Not as close this time. The reason why it's not as close because we probably need a few more turns before we zero in to the correct value. However, you can see that we're fairly close and you can see how this methodology really does work for calculating any value in the table. You can imagine without a, cal without a calculator or computer, you'd be sitting there for a very long time trying to figure out how to do that. But notice that this is how we got the table of values. You're not expected to do something like this unless you're really interested and you're into mathematics like that. However, I wanted to show you that there was a way in which these values were actually calculated. And if you were interested, this is how we did that.